All right, now take note of um, this line here, this line here, and I'll scroll up a little bit, and this line here. This is going to be the style of naming convention that gets saved on snapshots, JPEGs, and movies. Now, if we scroll up a little bit in this section here, we'll see what each one of these letters corresponds to. So at the beginning, we have V. Well, V stands for event, which is simply a... Uh, it's just a number of the event, and it'll count upwards for each event that takes place. Uh, you know, one, two, three, and so forth. Personally, I don't really care to have the event in there, so I'm going to remove it. And now we're left with year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Well, that's kind of a lot of numbers to kind of mash together. So in order to make it a little easier to read, I'm going to add some dashes. So now we have year, month, and day separated by one dash, hour, minute, second separated by one dash as well, and then in the center, both sections are separated by three dashes. Uh, you can put in whatever you prefer, but this is what works for me, so I'm actually going to apply this to all three sections here. Now you might be asking yourself, now wait a second, you just turned off JPEGs, why are you going to change this? Not only that, but I don't even use snapshots, why are you bothering changing it? I'm changing it simply because if down the line I decide to activate these features, at least the naming convention is already done. Uh, movie file name, which is going to be, um, that's going to include AVIs, as you can see here. Uh, this is what's going to apply to me. So um, we're going to, this is good here, so we're going to keep running with that. Some live webcam server settings to view your uh, current feed of what your camera's seeing. Uh, pan tilt uh, settings for you guys who might have uh, pan and tilt cameras. Uh, keep moving here. Uh, SQL, this is going to be uh, database related. I'm not going to touch anything in here. I'm going to let all this alone. All right, and we're at the end of the config file. Now take note to these four lines here. These are going to be the thread files, which are these guys here in Etsy Motion. Now, each one of these are deactivated by the semicolon at the beginning of the line. If you're running a multi-camera setup, you're going to need to utilize one thread file per camera. Uh, in order to do that, we of course have to activate it just like any other entry that has been on this config file. Now, here's a problem. User, local, Etsy, and then the file name. We're in Etsy motion, so this is not correct for Ubuntu. Chances are that this is correct for a different Linux distribution. So we have to change this accordingly to whatever we're running. So I adjust this to Etsy Motion, and then there's Thread 1 and Etsy Motion, and there's Thread 2. So we have Etsy Motion, and then here's Thread 1 and Thread 2. So we're good. So we have activated the file by uh, removing the semicolon, and we've corrected the path for our particular Linux distribution. The only thing left to do is to go into each one of these files and edit them and put in whatever settings are going to be unique to that specific camera. Just remember, one thread file per camera, and you're only going to be putting in settings that are unique to that exact camera. Otherwise, uh, settings that can be shared among all the cameras, you can put right here in the motion config file, and that'll be good. Like I said, I'm only running a single camera, so I'm going to undo everything that I did. And we're going to save, and we can now exit out of that. Override. Oh, and it failed. Okay, not starting motion daemon. Why? Because it's disabled. Okay, where's it disabled? Etsy default motion. No problem. We'll do a gedit of Etsy default motion. All right. We'll read this here. Here's a comment tag. Set to yes to enable the motion daemon. Okay. So we'll remove no. Put yes. We'll close. Hit the up arrow key. And bam, we are now running. Now something else I want to show you guys really quick is... Uh, in my particular situation, my server's kind of shoved in the corner of my basement. So I wanted a more convenient way to view my feeds back from any other computer within the local area network uh, within the household. So I decided to share out the target directory 
that Motion is saving the feeds to through Samba. Um, so you can edit the actual Samba config file, but uh, we're just going to use this small GUI here. Uh, this GUI is located in the software center. It's just labeled uh, Samba, or you can install. You can install it through terminal sudo app get install system dash config dash Samba. So that's how you would install it through terminal. Otherwise, it's available in the software center. It's a very simple GUI. There's not too much to it. We're just going to add a new directory. We're going to browse. Start at file system, media, storage, motion. Hit OK. All right, that looks good. Writable, visible. Access, we're going to give myself access. Um, if this is your first time using Samba, you are going to have to create a user for yourself. Uh, I use Samba for other reasons, so I'm already in here. And then we'll hit OK. And this looks good. Now, what I just did is I shared out the target directory of motion through Samba. And that means it's going to be accessible by other users on the network. Uh, you're going to be doing this on the actual system that is running motion. Now, how do you access it from your laptop or another desktop or a, basically any other client machine? Well, you're going to start in Nautilus and you're going to hit Control L to bring up the location bar. And we're going to start with SMB since we're using the Samba protocol colon slash slash and the IP address of your server. Mine is 192.168.1.150 and then I'm going to do a slash and my share name which is just motion. And I'll hit enter. Now normally you'll be asked for a password here. I have mine saved. In fact I even have it bookmarked over here. So that's why I was not asked a password. Uh, secondly I have two folders here as you can see. I have archive and backdoor cam. Uh, this is just me trying to be organized. I'll put older feeds in archive, so um, that way there's only the most recent feeds in backdoor cam. So we'll go into backdoor cam here. Now if you take notice at the name of these files, you can see how the naming convention changed based on what I did in the um, config file. What you're looking at here is my live server. So these are previous feeds um, that I had set up uh, before when I originally set up motion. Uh, you can sort by date modify just by clicking here and in that way everything is in a direct order so you can view back exactly where you need to go. Uh, just by double clicking these files uh, VLC or Totem Media Player will open and I'll be able to play them back accordingly over the network. Uh, there's quite a few other video players out there that will play files over Samba but um, VLC and Totem are the ones to keep in mind for, um, uh, for doing that. Uh, other than that, um, that's all you have to do to set up Samba. Uh, it is by no means required for motion to function, but if you want to add a little more convenience to your setup, uh, you can do what I did, and that way you can be sitting on the back deck on your laptop and uh, viewing feeds from your server from earlier that day. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now just to recap a couple things that we uh, talked about on this tutorial, you basically installed motion, uh, you enable the daemon. Uh, keep in mind by enabling that daemon, uh, if your server reboots for whatever reason, it'll automatically start when the system fires up. Um, so by enabling the daemon, it'll automatically kick it on if the system reboots. Um, something I recommend to you guys is back these files up. Save them somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Flash drive, Ubuntu One, Dropbox, doesn't matter. Just make sure they're saved. Because in, in the event that your server uh, magically self-destructs or you get a brand new box and you do a fresh install and then you get motion rolling again, if you dump these files back into this directory, you're done. Motion's going to be running just like that. Uh, and that way you don't have to reconfigure all of your camera settings. And if you have a very complex setup with a lot of cameras, that could save you a lot of time. Uh, so make sure you save these files somewhere, it doesn't matter where, and uh, that way it'll make it a little easier down the road if you ever have to do a uh, if you ever have to get running from scratch again. Uh, keep in mind the comment tags. The developers did an excellent job putting a lot of very relevant information in those comment tags uh, within the config file. Just all you have to do is just read line by line and uh, just take note to what 
information is being given to you and apply that accordingly to whatever feature you are looking to adjust. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to get motion rolling quickly since all the information is right there in front of you. Uh, also keep in mind that motion runs as a user named motion. Uh, so you want to make sure that that user has full access to the target directory. And uh, lastly, we also set up a Samba share, which is by no means required for motion to run, but it's something that I did uh, that was convenient for my setup, and I wanted to highlight it here just in case uh, anybody out there was interested in doing that as well. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it, and uh, good luck.